I guess I, uh, the reason I wanted to be here this evening was to make sure that we didn't accidentally forget that little detail called the rest of the world. Um, because we live in an age of advanced globalization. Everything that happens to us in the UK or Guatemala or Malawi is probably happening to somewhere else, somebody else somewhere else at the same time. There's no such thing as a domestic issue anymore. There are only global issues. And this is what globalization has done. And therefore, when we're thinking about trying to sort out things better, we have to think internationally, because otherwise our solutions will be too small and they'll be inadequate. And what Indra said is, is very similar to something that I always say. There's a tendency amongst uh, national governments to treat all foreigners either as enemies to be liquidated or potential customers to be marketed to instead of members of the same species. And this seems to me to be horrible. Um, 20,000, or was it 200,000 years ago, I forget, it was such a long time, when we left the Great Rift Valley and stopped being a single tribe and walked in our different directions. I would argue that the rest of human history since that point has been a story of us desperately trying to get back together again. And the good news is that we've succeeded. Humanity is now, once again, albeit much larger and much more spread out, once again a single organism for the simple reason that we can now, if we want to, all talk to each other. We are reconnected. And so the Gaia theory says that all nature is a single organism. To damage or to remove one part of it is to damage a whole. I would say that humanity is, once again, a single organism. And to damage one part of it is to damage the whole. So when we talk about the alternative, it has to be a global alternative. All of our problems are global in nature, from climate change to pandemics, to weapons proliferation, to injustice and inequality, to terrorism, to migration. No single country is capable of resolving any of those issues on its own. We must cooperate, we must collaborate in order to have a future. But the difficulty is that the nation state is still behaving. It's still behaving in the way it was at the signing of the Treaty of Westphalia. The nations are still warring tribes bent on each other's destruction. And that's the thing we've got to change. So one of the things we need to look at is a change in the culture of governance, which doesn't ask how well can we do and screw everybody else, but how can, well can we all do together. And the last point at the end of that is simply to say, I think that there's a new gold standard of good governance in the 21st century, which does the right thing for our own people and our own problems, and at the same time does the right thing for the whole of humanity and the whole of the planet. And that's not a 2 plus 2 equals 4, that's a 2 plus 2 equals 5. Because if you bring the international dimension into everything you do, no matter how local, no matter how parochial and minute, you will make better policy. Because doing things internationally is inspiration. Getting other people's experiences, other cultures, sharing problems, working on them together, it's inspiration. And you come up with better ideas as a result. So that, I think, is part of the solution. Um, yeah, you can. Thank you. <laughs>
We find our hope looking forwards and outwards, not inwards and backwards. And we'll get 700 million members. And once you've got 700 million members, then you can start the gigantic task of arguing with the others and reassuring them that there's nothing very frightening about forwards and outwards. And that globalization is good and natural, and it doesn't have to be run by evil corporations. I spoke. I'm a one line. There's uh, a problem with, uh, with globalization's brand, with its image at this particular moment in history. It's actually in some ways quite similar to the quote-unquote brand of the European Union. Both globalization and the European Union are cursed in the sense that national governments, member states of the EU, will always take personal credit for everything good that happens in their country and blame globalization or the European Union for every time they screw up. And so it's not really surprising. Brexit was not surprising at all because uh, consecutive governments for the last 40 years have been blaming Brussels for everything bad that happened here and taking personal credit for everything good that Brussels delivered to us. And then suddenly one day David Cameron turns around and says, by the way, the European Union is the best thing that's ever happened and you should vote for it. The response is likely to be like, fuck we will. Right? And it's the same with globalization. Globalization is associated predominantly in people's minds with the admittedly very bad hijacking of the forces of globalization by evil corporations, often in hoots with very bad governments, and it's been a disaster. But the response, of course, is not to try to stop or reverse globalization, because we can't. Globalization is a human instinct. Globalization is driven by the technologies and the innovations that human beings instinctively develop, and they're all about preserving life and connecting life. That's what we do. Human beings are globalization. It's the process of our history. You can't reverse it. And at the moment, we're faced with a very, very bleak and very unfortunate choice between more of the same globalization, which frankly has been catastrophic, and that's why these upheavals are happening, or a retreat into a kind of proto-fascism, which pretends that globalization isn't happening and is a bad thing. The alternative is to take advantage of this pause in human history. We're all very shocked at the moment. And to say, let's press reset. Let's devise in a mature, responsible, and global way what globalization should be about. And it's not just about corporations. It's already about a lot of good things that people don't hear about. But primarily, it's the best thing that's ever happened because it puts so much creative and innovative power at our fingers' ends. All creativity, all innovation comes from the mixing of cultures. It always has done and it always will. There's nothing new on the planet. Good things come when you stir things up. And what globalization has delivered to humanity in this age is the richest, maddest, most polycultural soup of cultural <laughs> stimuli that we've ever had since we came out of Africa. And if we can't use that to make new and wonderful things, we're arseholes. <laughs> um, and, and so, you know, if, 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 when, when the alternative power um, comes to power, yeah. the alternative party, we will say that the new national anthem of the United Kingdom is Stir It Up by Bob Marley. <laughs>